representing that relationship that's really free in a way before God, able to lament, able to express through uh, poetry, I mean, what, what kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, 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 transcends our normal language. And so I wanted to just write my own type of psalm. So this song is really, if I could write a psalm and express to God a personal prayer, this is what, what I would put in a song. Speak your word into my ears. Started a world the wind, my lungs always. I fall back out in my book of you and sing out the storm to prove you weep into dirt. i 
Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening to that. Um, and I guess I'll just, Laura, you can stop me if, if there's anything to say, but I can just talk. <laughs> I, I'm good at just talking. <laughs> but uh, so the last line of that song, Our Disparate Spheres Combined, was really the whole impetus for this record was to try to bring a collection of songs that were, or a, a journey for uh, lamenting, pining for, celebrating um, your kingdom come, uh, heaven and earth combining. And where is that disparate still? Where, the, where is that combining? And then the tension in between. So these songs aim at that. That was my own personal um, expression of that. Many of those lyrics may not translate uh, to yourself um, as that happens in songs sometimes, but that song is a, a more than all the rest is a is that personal kind of one for me so um this next one is really about that combining of heaven and earth through the name of god and it's called i am i, I am which comes from the exodus 3 14 passage where god reveals himself to moses i am that i am and something i learned in fuller uh was uh, that hebrew verb is in the imperfect so it can be translated, and you might know that too, is I will be what I will be. Um, so there's this ongoing nature of, of God's action in the world and God's presence in the world, and that one of faithfulness, that I, I will be with you uh, through the Exodus, Moses and your people, and see you through. And so I wanted to write a song that was imagining and thinking about how is the I am, I am, I am that I am, I will be that I will be operating right now. And so this song involves social justice issues where God may be at work uh, liberating the oppressed and calling us to join that. So it has some language around that. Um, so I hope you enjoy that as well.
So that's it's funny for me to hear back again. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't listen to your own songs for a good while. But uh, so that's that's the journey and the call for us to follow what God's doing in the world. You know, I I firmly believe that God is at work in the world, and our task is to join in. And so part of our we just got to wake up to where that is. And so that's what that song's about. Um, fun to note about the music as well is the saxophone player that's in there. He used to play for Prince and Prince uh, actually is just down the road. To, um, uh, so anyway, that, that was kind of a fun connection. But I should just mention some of these band members because really you know, you're talking to me, but there's so many people that's involved in this. And I should mention people you won't know, but Matt Patrick is a big part of this. Uh, the producer, engineer, Zach Miller, drummer, Aaron Fabrini, uh, Jeremy Ilgasacker, and uh, many others. But those men that I mentioned right there are all people who helped craft this next song you'll hear, which is entitled Eric Garner at all. And to be frank, I, I really struggled with if we should write this song at all, being my own social location as a white male. Um, I, I didn't want to encroach on something that's not my voice to speak. And so I just want to say that sensitivity or put that sensitivity out there, but certainly want to join in my own re, uh, journey of repentance of our, the systems of racism that I'm complicit in and um, the majority white culture has been, and um, I'm part of that. And so what's my road rep to repentance is to be involved in uh, speaking out what the truth is and uh, embracing my own cross in this way. So this song is one one way in which I am attempting to follow in that way. Um, and the individuals I mentioned, when we were doing this record, we all had these morning stretches, which we called uh, just trying to get the vibe in the studio, right? Um, so um, it's a studio in town that we love to hang out at. But we just said, hey, you guys just play whatever you want. And so those, those three guys just, uh, Jeremy th started to play this instrumental piece on a guitar and then the others joined in and that just became a thing and then later on Matt and I said hey we could make this a little song vignette so it's a little shorter song and I just sang um or put lyrics to the melody that was kind of already there in the guitar part so it's very much a collaborative effort and I would just try to wrestle with um the story of Eric Garner and so many others that's why it's named at all so Eric Garner's and all the rest and what he said uh, I can't breathe uh, resonates even through of course what we just experienced with the George Floyd um, story this whole year which just and I'm in Minneapolis Minnesota so the events of last night were fundamental a beginning of justice not an end to it and really a reckoning, a uh, accountability as it's being called, not really true justice because true justice is gonna involve a repair of the whole system. Uh, all that to say, th the language of I can't breathe is very much embedded in this movement that I think God is a part of and we as Christians need to be a part of it from a biblical justice standpoint. So this song just tries to journey through that and it uses images of the exodus as well um, to kind of uh, resonate with the story of black people in America and in that struggle toward freedom. So this is Eric Garner. Get off on me, skin hard, 
mentioned that that video was made by Jeremy Ilvesacker and it, just taking um, stock footage from actually a, a military video that's talking about um, war economy and so he just he thought that was just the history of the United States and how we've in numerous ways um, have reckoning that's what he was putting together there but I should just make comment on that um, but all that to say, uh, I want to share that song in particular, just the, uh, with, with kind of what just has happened with the trial with Derek Chauvin yesterday. So um, there you go. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Ben. It was just a pleasure to get to hear your music and even more to hear your heart behind the music and kind of the own journey that you've been on and and things that God's teaching you too. And so thanks so much for sharing that with us. And so we, we would just want to open it up for questions too, if there's anyone else that has a question they want to ask Ben, but um, I'll just kind of kick it off and just um, ask you a little bit about your own uh, journey with music and kind of where that started, where, how'd you become interested in music and in particular writing music too? Well, when I was, a youngster, I guess, around 10, I was pretty convinced I was destined for the NFL. But as you can see, my physique did not let that pan out as much. Um, so I was resisting calls from my mom to play piano and these things. But uh, I, I eventually just got into music um, in middle school and just really stuck with it the whole time. And cello became my main instrument and that became I mean, an instrument in college. Um, but all the all the while, I kind of wrote. So it's a mystery to me. I mean, I think for a lot of us, too, of how do you get into something is a bit of a, a snowball effect. This little thing happens, and it just keeps happening. And um, But my first record happened after um, a failed engagement. I had a ter terribly broken heart. And so I uh, went into the basement and wrote a bunch of of songs there and that kind of was the birth for me of hey this is a this is a place in which I can heal myself hopefully others can interact with healing as well it's a place where I can express things that are really hard to express in other mediums and that's what the arts can give us too is they are languages and sometimes you can't speak everything in a in a plain language and so when music and words come together. I think this is Pete Seeger's quote. I might misquote him, but he said, um, you know, words help us think, music helps us feel. So when you have a, a song, you can feel a thought. And uh, to me, that resonates. And that's why I think I got into it. So this is what, what you've heard now is the uh, some songs on my third album. So. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and how did your band come together? Well, my drummer, Zach Miller, and I went to uh, the same church. My parents started a church in Duluth, Minnesota, if you're familiar with that on Lake Superior. And so we were in the same youth group. And I really idolized Zach all growing up because he was a senior when I was a freshman in, the, in uh, high school. When I moved to the Twin Cities, 
uh, I connected with him and he really connected me to others in the music community in the Twin Cities. Um, and he was the producer on my first two albums. And um, so from him, really friends and band members came through that connection. And, uh, but we're a loose collective of people who we, we play a lot in our church communities as well as outside. And uh, there's quite the uh, network of folks, I would say, in the Twin Cities in that category. And so, so really a collective is the best sense of it because my band is more like come on, come all at times. And sometimes we have choir going on. And um, so um, that's the nature of it. Great. It's always great to play with with friends too. Yeah, <laughs> so. but I think it's the best way to go. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And so we know that you're a singer and a songwriter, and you play cello. Are there any other instruments that you play, or um, I yeah, that you really stick to guitar and piano and cello. Those are those are the best bets. I mean, I've I have played banjo on occasion, but I'm not a banjo player. Um, but you know. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. That's right. Yeah, I'm always amazed at musicians and just how they can play so many different instruments. So, because um, they're so different in a lot of ways too. So, I mean, guitar and banjo. I know those are similar, but they're still very different. Right. Yeah. the The fundamentals of music can translate, but the the skills on a particular instrument are what to learn. But yeah, it is it is a language that you can just speak through different portals, if you will. You just gotta learn that portal, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And how do you go about writing music? Um, and about how long does it take you when you kind of start thinking about something that you wanna produce? I think I've only written one or two songs in one day, like where it just like comes, like, you know, some channels opened up and then it just happens really what is my normal process is painstaking and <laughs> a little miserable at times to be frank, but also the love of it overcomes that misery for sure. But the melody comes for me first. That's where I kind of fall in love with whatever that feeling is. And then I just, it's kind of like, think of it like a field, like I'm gifted with the melody. It's like a field and I just start digging in that field and it takes a while to find the lyrics. So because it is a puzzle piece. You have you have this melody you're somewhat married to, and then you want to find a, a thought and a rhythm structure and rhyme structure that all cohere. Uh, so I, I do write a lot of poetry. That's really, it being a, a, a father of two young kids, the amount of time that music takes, not always affordable. Poetry is this little gift you can whip out right now, you know, so I do that every morning and, and that's my real creative outlet. Songs sometimes come on that, but usually it's the melody first for me and you just kind of live with it until it comes. And so, yeah, and there's my process. That's great. Thanks so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other questions that anyone has for Ben? We have a couple people on, oh, here we go. No, I just want to say I was so blessed by the first song. This oh, is great. Minnesota. Yeah, I glad to hear that. Yeah, I. It's just like it. It just brought me into the presence of God, and um, hmm. yeah, and uh, I know that I. I don't remember all the words, but it's like I don't know if you were finding the ghost, but I think the ghost was finding me, and that I'm safe in the ghost, and so. That's the feeling that I got today. And I think it has blessed me. And I think it's going to give me the strength that I need for the day. So thank you so much. And well, I love yeah. the melody. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful yeah. to hear. Yeah, God bless you in that. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Hapsuda. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, well, I guess one last question, Ben, is if anyone wants to purchase your music or download your music, where would they go to do that? Yeah, thanks for that. If you would like to listen to music or have it, it's it, it you can totally download it for free. I'm happy with that. If you want to listen to it, that's great. That's the gift back to me. 
Uh, but if you just go to benrosenbush.com, that will lead you to a band camp site and there you can pay what you want kind of a thing for a download. It's also on Spotify as well. So you can listen that way. But. Great. Well, I hope you all take time and check out um, Ben and all the other music that he's producing. So thanks so much, Ben, for joining us and for sharing again with us this morning. And um, we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having Thank me you. on. Bless y'all. Take care. Yes. Blessings. Blessings.